the key areas we've been focusing at present have been in respect of income and capital that led to some legislation fairly recently. We're also looking at trustees' powers. We're also trying to get the whole of the trust law into a more sensible and comprehensible system. I suspect it will be a very political budget because I think the Chancellor has some money to give away so that I think we'll get an increase in the personal allowance because their coalition partners will agree with that. I think he'll want to pull something out of the bag and we know they're looking to various changes on uh, principal private residence relief but we need to remember that usually in an election year we have two finance acts so you'll have budget announcements and then a short bill that becomes an act by the 30th of March because that's when Parliament is to be prorogued and then we'll have a further budget sometime in June after the election if we've worked out what the coalition is going to be where we'll have further announcements and that I think is the time when matters will be concentrated on but some areas to think about where there's been consultation are changes on DOTAS, Disclosure of Tax Avoidance Schemes, and Inheritance Tax, which I suspect would get quite a lot of support politically from all parties. And it wouldn't surprise me to have announcements that go to what the government call avoidance, to close it down, to raise more money so that they can finance what they're doing, or at least say that the package they're putting forward is fully financed and it may be conditional on them being re-elected. But as I said at the start, I would expect it to be very political. The changes to SDLT, I think, are going to mean a lot of people are going to have to pay it. There are people out there still selling arrangements to avoid SDLT, but HMRC are in print as saying they haven't seen any arrangements that they think work. So that I think you need to think long and hard before you go into it. I came across some arrangements entered into a fair time ago where the revenue were opposing the registration of title at the land registry with the effect that where people had used that arrangement, which I carefully say I hadn't advised on, uh, to buy residential property, they were likely to find problems with their mortgage companies. So before you think of trying to avoid any SDLT, you need to think very long and hard before you leap. Well, a lot of what I've done has informed various aspects. So I managed to settle one VAT case using a 16th century statute that had abolished market uva in Wales, um, the statutes of Wales, which uh, is that an academic matter, is that a practical matter? Knowing where the law is, is I find interesting, sad as it may sound, but you can use it to achieve particular results and that's where you can get a degree of creativity in it. The changes around most of what I've been doing has been in the environment as regards what people call tax avoidance these days. In other words, what can and can't you do? Certainly in the last five years, politically, there's been quite a change in what is acceptable, what is unacceptable. And if you look at the approach that the Public Accounts Committee, the PAC, has taken, it certainly raised the profile of that. And a lot of my clients now are much more aware of the reputational risk if they go into any tax arrangements. I've also found HMRC getting much more professional in the way that they are dealing 
with a lot of the tax avoidance and a lot of what they've done I think has been quite cleverly and well constructed.